After double the usual January rainfall, the flood level in Paris has peaked at just under six metres. The swollen river Seine has put the famous bateau Mouche out of action and forced one of the Louvre's galleries to close. But away from the tourist attractions, residents of many suburbs to the west of the French capital have found themselves wading into their homes after the river burst its banks. Basements and gardens are submerged, and in many areas gas has been cut off, meaning no heat and no hot water. This couple explains that the inhabitants of Montesson didn't want to extend the dike they were building because it would hide their view of the Seine. Now they've had enough of being flooded each time the water level rises. Montesson may be in for a long wait. Weeks of rain have saturated the ground, meaning it could take several days or even weeks for the flooding to subside. C'est reparti vers le 10 janvier, ça a baissé correctement, on a espéré que ça ne remonte pas, mais bon il n'a pas arrêté de pleuvoir, donc euh, forcément euh, ça a monté, 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 tout ce qu'il y a plus dans l'Est arrive dans la Seine, euh, là on n'a plus de salle de séminaire, plus de salle de jeu, plus de salle de sport, et puis les caves, bah, comme vous pouvez le constater, on a 1m50 en gros dans les caves d'eau. Tout le congelé est à jeter, mais bon, la prochaine fois, on sera plus prévoyant. Même si ça fait longtemps qu'on est là, on n'avait pas pensé que ça montrait autant. Et puis chaque, à chaque jour, on nous annonce la décrue pour la nuit, et puis c'est reporté, reporté, reporté. Et pendant ce temps-là, la scène monte.
devastating, disastrous and unprecedented. That's how many have described the worst drought to hit Cape Town. The first major city in the world to run out of water. And as Capetonians brace themselves for the harsh reality of day zero, city officials and politicians are still urging them to try and save every drop of water. It is now that we have to do everything that we can. The only way we will defeat day zero is to use less water. This is for all of us. We have to do this. It's absolutely right that we all have to put in an effort. And the only way we're going to prevent day zero now is if everybody cuts down to 50 meters or less of water per day. I always say we have to save water as if our lives depend on it, because they do. Captonians have been asked to use a maximum of 50 litres of water per person per day as of the 1st of February. This is to try and prevent a day zero situation when they will be expected to get by on only 25 litres per person per day. This is a natural disaster. This is our greatest moment. And I want to ask all of us, let us now in this hour stand together united to defeat day zero and we can and we will and we shall. But many Capetonians say the drought conditions and water restrictions have left them concerned and confused. I'm upset, angry, because the government didn't do its work properly. To run out of water, that's, that's actually sad. I mean, the government should have made a plan long time ago. They, they, they're building houses everywhere. They, they're running pipelines, water. They should have invested in the dam long time ago already. Not now. It's too late now. And I mean, the schools are going to suffer. The hospitals are going to suffer. All of us, we're going to suffer. Cape Town's informal settlements, where people have always shared communal taps and toilets over the years, will not be directly affected by day zero water restrictions. But residents in and around the city and its suburbs will have to queue at water collection points. Renadal Calm, CGTN, Cape Town, South Africa.
جمال الواحات زيد عليها المنظر ديال الثلج تخيلوا معايا المنظر كيف يكون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم التساقطات الثلجيه الان في منطقه زاكوره بعد ازيد من بعد غياب دام ازيد من خمسين سنه سبحان الله Heavy snowfall that has begun falling since Saturday night in the Iranian capital of Tehran has caused havoc, shutting down airports as well as schools. Major highways heading to Tehran were also blocked due to icy conditions, leaving many motorists stuck in their vehicles for hours. Power outages were also reported in several districts. Despite the transport snags, many welcomed the heavy snow, which came amid a severe drought. Good afternoon. The most intense cold wave of the season is gripping South Korea. Many parts had more record-breaking temperatures this morning as cold air from Siberia struck Northeast Asia, including China and Japan, where people are shivering with the unseasonably cold conditions this winter. But the air quality is cleaner than ever. So this morning, daily low here in Seoul was at minus 17.5 degrees Celsius. And people further north saw readings going down to as low as nearly minus minus 30 degrees Celsius.
Do you believe in climate change? That question is one the overwhelming majority of scientists worldwide have answered with a confident yes. Climate change is real. But when Piers Morgan asked this of the President of the United States? Uh, there is a cooling and there's a heating. I mean, look, it used to not be climate change. It used to be global warming, right? right? That wasn't working too well because it was getting too cold all over the place. Uh, the ice caps were going to melt. They were going to be gone by now, but now they're setting records, okay? They're at a record level. This is Dr. Brenda Ekwurzel, a senior climate scientist at the Union of Concerned Scientists. She's studied the environment for more than 25 years. Does she believe in climate change? That's like asking if you believe in gravity. I know from the facts as a senior climate scientist that climate change is real and it's affecting us now. Now back to President Trump. Let's start with this part of his response. Uh, there is a cooling and there's a heating. I mean, look, it used to not be climate change. It used to be global warming, right? right? Actually, it's always been climate change and global warming. As a scientist, we tend to use the term climate change because there's all sorts of changes that are happening on the planet, including global average temperatures rising over the long term. And that latter part is called global warming. The president has a theory as to why global warming isn't used as much in his view. That wasn't working too well because it was getting too cold all over the place. It is not getting too cold. Global average temperature for the Earth is warming, and that's a fact. Take a look at this heat map from NASA showing rising temperatures from 1884 to 2016. According to researchers, 16 of the 17 warmest years on record have occurred within the last 20 years. And lastly, how about those changing ice caps? Uh, the ice caps were going to melt, they were going to be gone by now, but now they're setting records. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, last year saw the second smallest annual sea ice area on record. And these images from NASA show how quickly the ice is in fact disappearing. We're losing vast tracts of Arctic sea ice in the summer. And just because it's winter time doesn't mean that you can point to the sea ice in the winter and say climate change is not happening. That's just gobbledygook. Gobbledygook versus science. You be the judge. CNN reached out to NASA to see if any of NASA's climate change researchers or experts would be able to state the facts about climate change for that segment. NASA said no. Keep in mind, NASA gets its funding from the federal government, which is led by President Trump. Perhaps every scientist from that government agency was busy today, or perhaps telling Americans the truth about climate change might put you at risk with the administration in terms of your job.